good afternoon traders today is Saturday at 2 50 p.m. lovely weather here in Daytona Beach Florida hope everyone's enjoying their weekend looking at Friday's closing values the Russell 2000 led the way finishing off up eight tenths of a percent followed by the Dow Jones and then the S&P NASDAQ was the underperformer Euro slipped off a little bit and we'll go over that in just a moment Dow Jones finished the week up 3%, NASDAQ 3.76%, and then the S&P was the underperformer at 2.7%. The reason the NASDAQ finished up is because a lot of times when you see the indice that leads the way down, which was the large cap tech stocks, they're usually bought more aggressively on the way up because more investors are having to cover and re-enter their positions. On a year-to-date basis, the Dow Jones is leading the way up 5.5%. So we're starting off looking at the E-mini futures, which is the S&P 500. This up move right here came on light volume, and we don't like seeing that on up moves because what that shows is that investors aren't fully appreciating this rally. They're not fully convinced that the bad news is over and they're looking at it from a fundamental standpoint because there's still a lot of news in the markets along with the technical standpoint. The technical aspect of this is being that they think that there's going to be a lower high put in and more selling is going to come because the bad news woes are not over yet. I just think that there's a little more downside than upside but we're not just going to be convinced yet we're not going to enter one way or the other we're going to wait till the storm passes let all the bulls and bears with the big money fight it out that's when we'll enter our positions if we do hold over the 1316 level and then eventually get above 1320 maybe you could start busting out of prior highs and get back up to 1350 which is the real target that they're gunning for on the downside basis we would want to see us hold below this 1316 get back to the 1303 slip down continue our descent go into the 1290 and eventually heading back to the 1272 as we speak this is a bullish chart. This is a flagging pattern going into Friday's close. So if they busted it above the 1312 and 1316, you're going to want to get long. Now we're looking at the euro and we move down here to meet that support level at 140.73. Now the news that's waiting on the euro is Portugal believes that it could weather the financial crisis until a new government goes into effect in June and then that's when they'll try to borrow money and try to relieve some of the restrictions that are on the country and that's one of the reasons the euro is being weighted down another thing Spain says that the private investors are willing to rescue the regional banks which is holding a large amount of real estate on the balance sheets now that's not confirmed yet and that's another reason why it's weighing down. So if we slip back below the 140.73, I think that the euro will have a little more downside. And that's why the dollar is going up right now. I just don't think that the dollar is going to hold above 77. And every time we've got a buy signal, we're quickly to disregard that with a sell signal on our proprietary indicators. We make these little bearish flags and then they just continue to sell off each time. This pretty much looks like the exact path that we've gone down this entire descent of the dollar. Continuous bearish flags being made. So right now we might be able to get back up to 77. I'm not getting long the US dollar. Overall, I'm bearish. I'm basing my entire thesis on how I trade right now on the backs of a declining dollar and higher inflation. So just keep watching this, keep it on your radar. But 
from my opinion, I don't think it's a good trade right here. Google finished down seven points in Friday's session, had some bad news on it. Still has a declining trend line right here. We bounced off of a support area, which was right above the 200 day moving average. That's why you saw this jolt, but this could be a bearish flag playing out in Google. If we get back below the 20 day moving average, we could move back down to 560. Kramer is very bullish on this. He thinks it's going back to 600. We'll keep that in the back of our heads. Overall, I mean, Google is a strong fundamental company. They generate a lot of money, and they're a dominant player in the NASDAQ, so we always keep this on our radar. Looking at Apple now, which is the leader in the weightings of the NASDAQ 100. We have this declining trend line, which a lot of people are watching. Apple's a big stock, and it trades 17 million shares a day. You know a lot of this has to do with institutions. So when we bounced off the 100, got back above it, we're holding above the 20 and the 50 day moving average. So 350 is a psychological level. Above it, we could bust out of this or at least retest this trend line. And if we get below it, then we're gonna look to start getting short, maybe head back down to around 340. And if Apple starts descending below this 350, the NASDAQ is going to become bearish, and that could lead us down once again. Caterpillar had another amazing week, breaking to another all-time high on Friday at 110.15. Now, they sold it off a little bit. This is a bearish candlestick, but anything right now would be, uh, if you want to get long this, you want to see it retest this prior high that we put in, at 107.68 and maybe get a bounce off of it see how it consolidates around there if we get below this level you're gonna see a range between 105.68 and then this prior high IBM which got this downgrade ended up running back up and the analyst whoever downgraded this is really eating this call that he just made because when a stock's downgraded and then it runs up over where it got downgraded that week you know that's not a very good call you see this uh, a bearish flag could be in play here we're gonna keep watching this I'm not bullish on this uh, 163 is going to be a tough level to get through and that's pretty much like all the other stocks with the hold above it look to get long to 165 below it we're heading back to 160 here is a chart of the NASDAQ weightings. Apple leads the way, being 20% of the index, followed by Microsoft, Google, and Qualcomm, and then Oracle. That's why whenever these stocks report, you really need to pay attention, and I suggest listening to the conference calls since they are a big weight in the average. Looking at the analyst upgrades and downgrades sheet from Friday, ACAM got an upgrade. LVS got an upgrade and then Tidewater that was some of the main ones EXH got one too and they're actually a natural gas play downgrade Archel Daniels which is a agricultural chemical play Devon Energy and then RIM we already knew this was coming because that huge miss on earnings MT got initiated with an outperform that's a steel stock Harley Davidson, which the chart looks phenomenal. I don't necessarily like the business, but a lot of people, at least a lot of analysts, do like it and they think it's going to bust out next week. KSU, which is a nice dividend play, Kansas City Southern, got a market perform, and that's pretty much uh, all the good ones. Always pay attention to Goldman Sachs. Upgrades and downgrades are pretty important. So you should always watch the entire realm of them. Don't just watch uh, individual ones. You want to view a couple different ones when investing in a stock. Also, briefing doesn't offer this coverage. They don't offer Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan. So I prescribe, or excuse me, I subscribe to J Dow Jones Newswires, and they provide a lot to me. In all these in different industries, you can view news on all of them. I get my news like really fast, uh, a lot faster than fly on the wall and trade the news. 
<clears throat> I get all these different things, Barron's, Wall Street Journal, these analyst actions, Fed Reserve, military action. I'll just show you a little example here. Now this is expensive. It's $350 a month. So for the average trader, I wouldn't recommend it. And it just shows like all the latest news up to date. 258. We just had a refugee boat from Libya near in Italy. It's just it's pretty cool, guys. It really helps me get the full news that I so I can bring it to you. And I don't mind paying this price because it helps me in my trading and it helps me make money. But I'm gonna end the video now. Tomorrow I'm gonna give you guys the update for next week's watch list and what we're gonna watch for Monday at the open. Enjoy your weekend, guys. Talk to you tomorrow.